Hi everyone, um, we are going to be doing a concise um, concealer masterclass. Thank you so much for all your comments. Um, we try and read every single one and jot them down so we make sure that we're giving you the best content, um, content that's relevant and content that you can actually um, gain something from. And obviously the one that came up the most you may have noticed was concealer. Um, concealers that work around the eyes and do the best to kind of make you look less tired and help your makeup sit beautifully. Um, I'm just starting to apply um, this lovely, lovely moisturiser. It's a Japanese brand, um, Curel. Um, I picked it up in Boots the other day. Um, and it's this is for sensitive skin. It's a really lovely, um, intense moisture cream. Uh, it's pretty reasonable, but it feels so luxury on the skin. And the reason I'm doing this is just to kind of help you sort of remember and understand that you may do your skincare in the morning, especially if you're working from home, have breakfast, and just have a little pot, you know, maybe sort of by the side of your computer or um, in your bedroom or in the bathroom or somewhere like that, that if your skin does feel a little bit dry because you've been inside a lot, then just pop a little bit of moisture on because the key in creating a really beautiful natural foundation or a concealer application is the hydration in your skin. I've spoken to you about this before, but I just think people forget. So underneath your eyes, obviously you can take your moisturizer. I have a really lovely um, moisturizer that I adore. Now it's Kate Somerville um, Line Release. I just keep going back to it. It's pricey, it's, it's not cheap. Um, and it's a little, oh my God, this is the last pump. No, Kate, rescue me. Damn it. Anyway, sorry. Um, a little bit of what we have left, but the reason that I love this is that it lasts, the texture of hydration lasts under my eyes. Now, you might be the type of person who just thinks, God, no, that's the last thing I want, more oil underneath my skin, especially on my lids. Your lids tend to produce a lot more oil. The skin is thin and there's more sebaceous glands on your, on your eyelids. So we are prone to create more area, more oil in that area, which plays havoc with our makeup. So if you're too oily underneath your eyes, and of course you're not going to do that, but if you're dry and dehydrated like me, then you will. If you're not sure what skin type you've got and you put on your concealer and it literally crinkles your skin, it looks super obvious, and it doesn't look flattering, then you need more hydration in your skin or your concealer's too pigmented and too drying. So you need to swap that one out. It might be too old too. Um, so, you know, there's always lots of different things that make the difference. If you want, if you've got a, um, oh, I forgot to get them out, sorry. Um, if you have an oily eyelid, I'm trying to cover everyone's scenarios here, then it's great to use a, um, a primer for your eyes. Urban Decay is a great one. I really like using the eye bases by NARS and they have a clear one and they also have different shades as well and they just look like a little concealer stick and you pop them on and they absorb the extra oil from your lid so then you can put your makeup on. So it's still a kind of, you know, still within the concealer family gives you a good base. Alternatively, if you don't want to buy anything like that, you could use a setting spray, a tiny little bit, spritz it on your hand, and then just use it on a brush over the top and it will kind of give you the same effect. Um, and then just put a little bit of powder over the top. So they are really, really key things to do. So once you've done that and you put your um, concealer on and it still looks dry, then going in with a hyaluronic over the top, I'll show you in a second, also really helps. I wouldn't suggest using an oil in this area um, because one, it could get into your eye and two, it does create a lot of movement. So hyaluronic, this is one by Pestle and Mortar. Um, it's a Irish brand that I really love because um, the texture is just a little bit more rich and creamy than something like the Hyaluronic from The Ordinary, but that's five pounds and this is 20 odd pounds. Um, so, you know, you get what you pay for, but I'm not saying that the Hyaluronic does not work for The Ordinary, it does exactly that. It holds the water in your skin without you having a kind of reservoir of oil. 
So let's start with the lightest, most basic concealer that you can use sort of around your eye area. Now that would be a light reflecting concealer. And I've got two here. I've got one from Revolution and I've got one from Clinique. I've talked about the Clinique one before. Now what these products do is that they lift and add brightness to the darker areas of your eyes. Okay, so let's go in with the Clinique one. Um, just a little twisty pot, a lot of them have and you just paint away the bluey grey area that you want to conceal. Now this type of formula works perfectly by itself. So you could pop that on and please try and remember that little golden rule of, you know, da -da -da -da, doing something else for 10 seconds um, and then just taking a ring finger and just pushing it in because we have the windscreen wiper action which I learned from doing the half face makeups. Gosh, I hope we can get back to those one day. Um, where I watch everyone do their makeup and then kind of not criticize, critique, because we all kind of get used to doing things. And everyone would put their concealer on and do this. And it just, it thins out the product. And what you want is a product to um, do what it says. And because this has got light reflecting particles, it bounces the light back off my face. Um, now obviously I'm in front of a window and I've got a soft light here just to kind of amplify everything so you can see. Um, and you can see the difference. I could literally wear this concealer with nothing else and feel brighter and less tired than I did before. So that comes at different prices. Max Factor um, also do a really nice one that's called Radiant Lift and that comes in a sponge applicator. Another thing I should have gotten out for you. I thought I was ready, but clearly I wasn't. Um, I've used it before in, in um, different films, but it's not really about the product. Today, we're sort of talking about the type of concealer. And these are the ones that I recommend. Okay, so next up from that, um, one I really love is the Glossier Stretch. Give it a little polish on the old jeans, <laughs> make it more sparkly. Um, comes in about 13 different shades, and this is G10. And I love this for soft radiance, for soft concealing radiance, I suppose, because um, I'll apply it on the other side of my eye. This just gives me a really lovely dewy effect to my skin. So if I am feeling a little bit dehydrated, I know that I can chuck this on at seven in the morning, I can just paint it around my T-zone and it will sit beautifully and it won't drag my skin and it won't look like a layer on top and it won't make it look parched. Um, it is so soft and easy to use, works for all ages. So if it's your first ever concealer, and you've got beautiful skin, I wouldn't recommend this if you have blemishes, go to that in a second. Um, if you've, it's your first ever concealer and you've got beautiful skin, but you just want to perfect tiny little bits and have that natural finish, perfect. If you've got an older skin and you want a very light finish to your makeup and you don't want anything too heavy, again, this is great. But if you have oily skin, um, or your makeup tends to move a lot, or you tend to eat makeup, and that's obviously not physically eating it. Some skins just literally absorb makeup. You put it on, 10 minutes later, it's gone. And I have some clients like that. And I've worked out what sort of products and primers that I have to use to kind of really sort of make that makeup cling to their face a little bit longer. So the stretch concealer can be used all over your face. You could do a whole makeup in one or two shades, one just a little bit lighter around your eyes, just to give you a bit of variation, or just that lovely softness under the eye. Right, so once you've done that light concealing, you can just leave it like that, or you can take a little bit of translucent powder. Um, it can be in a solid compact form or something loose, and you can set it very lightly with a small brush. Now that will take the radiance out of it. So if your skin like mine tends to be dry, I don't use my concealer. I don't put powder over my concealer because it just deadens everything. So I don't need any powder. Um, and I'm going to show you the ones that I use that last a little bit longer um, if I need longevity. Um, so a little bit of powder underneath the eyes will just give you a little bit of longevity if you find that your concealer creases a lot. Now, if you find that your concealer creases a lot, again, I would avoid something that's too creamy. What you want to use is something that is a little bit more solid. Now, here are two opaque concealers. We've talked about the light reflecting ones. We've talked about a hydrating concealer. Now, these are opaque concealers. So these are fantastic at covering up pigmentation, um, blemishes, uh, little veins, anything that you want to conceal because it literally goes over the touch of your finger or with a brush 
and you can conceal your whole face if you wish or just certain areas. But the great thing about this product is that it's quite dry um, and you put it on and it stays put. So if I was working on a very oily skin, this would be perfect and it would give me a little bit of longevity. But where my pigmentation is here and especially on the side of my face here, I can literally just whack that on and it covers it, but it feels super light. The NARS concealer is great for blemishes and rosacea. I think it's absolutely fantastic. If you've got a lot of redness, um, like rosacea, then always try and use a little bit of a green um, tinted primer first. That does help. Clarins does a lovely one, um, and also Borean does a lovely one. And you're not going to look like Shrek. I'm sure I've done this before with you, but I can go through colour correcting again. I probably need to <laughs> reschedule everything and do just like a massive masterclass on makeup artistry and kind of categorise everything in short films. It might be easier to understand there, but that's probably like two months' work. But anyway, who knows? I might never ever leave the house again at this rate. Um, right, so again, these opaque concealers, great at pigmentation, blemishes because it's not too oily um, and anyone who has an oily complexion because anything too greasy would be too much. Um, the other one that I showed is a Laura Mercier um, Secret Camouflage. Now this um, has been popular in many makeup artist kits because it's got the little peachy toner that corresponds with the skin tone. The darker the skin tone, the more peachier it goes, and that just counteracts the bluey grey area under your eyes. Um, now, when you're using these colours to neutralise, so the green for the red, like I just spoke about, the peachy colour just helps to kind of knock back that colour, so the coverage aspect can be a little bit lighter. Okay, so just to gently recap, lovely hydrated skin if your skin is dry before application, mattify the area if you find that you're getting a lot of creasing, and if you're using a lot of creasing, use a mattifying concealer, nothing that's too soft and natural because it is going to move around. Um, light reflecting concealers bounce the light back, whereas opaque, opaque concealers cover. Um, the Glossier one is lovely for drier skins because it is more hydrating, and something like the Mars Soft Matte is great for acne, for oilier skins, things where you don't want it to move. And the Laura Mercier is great because you have the corresponding undertone as well to um, make sure that you can knock back any darker colours or redness or bluey grey areas under the eye. So that's a real bonus. This is slightly greasier than the NARS. So if you have an oily skin, um, I wouldn't use that so much, but if you have a totally drier skin, you might enjoy this. Um, and then going back to The Ordinary, which I know I ended up doing a dedicated film because this is the one I was originally going to do. Um, and again, you can use this in exactly the way that I showed you and it works for everybody. So I think this guy really helps with anyone who asks me my foundation Caroline creases. So try and put this on an eye that is nice and soft, not too oily, and you will find that this will dry and stay in place. Please, if you are one of those people that have left a comment and said that, please let me know if this works, because it works for me at work. The more that I can thin out the concealer, not overload that area with product and mattify it, the better it lasts. Now, if your eyes have a lot of movement in them, um, and your lid is very small and your socket is very heavy, naturally, just with the movement of your eye, you will always get some sort of creasing. I mean, you know, beauty's hard work, isn't it? It's not, it's not that straightforward to put your makeup on in the morning and then by seven o'clock you look the same and we wouldn't want that to be the case anyway. Well, actually we would, that's a complete lie, how great. <laughs> it's just not life, is it? It doesn't work like that. Yes, it's hard work to be glamorous and make the best of ourselves. Not even to be glamorous, you know, just to make the best of ourselves. You know, stop yourself looking tired and goodness knows what. Um, and again, the top tip about the hyaluronic. So say now I've got my concealer on and maybe I've got a meeting or I'm just feeling a little bit parched or I look at my makeup and I think, oh God, it's just gone crusty again. Little drop of hyaluronic and push it here. Just really push it in and it gives the radiance under the skin, but it doesn't give, you know, the shine of oil. It might do initially, but once it sinks in, it just helps to kind of dilute the concealer and just freshen you up. 
giving a bit more movement to that area. So please try that. I mean, maybe if you are one of those people who's saying, oh, it just goes all dry and crusty, it makes my skin look older, try this little tip for me first before purchasing anything else and let me know whether it makes a difference for you. It's work in progress, isn't it? And I really wish that I had you all as a live audience and we could be taking questions left, right and centre because then we could solve some of these beauty issues because the problem is we're all different. We all have different needs. We all have different skin tones, different skin colours and it's just me talking and I wish that I could just transform all of you and answer all your questions but this for the moment is the best I can do. So please let me know if any of those tips work and I hope that I've solved some of the issues. Bye for now.